Hey, how you doing? And today I figured I'd like to start introducing a little bit of other uh, forms of art um, in uh, on this channel. So what we're going to do today is 3D print something. Something simple like a, mm, I don't know, a fridge magnet pen holder because I need one. So we're going to be using Maya, which is a little bit overkill for 3D printing because Maya has a lot of other things going on. Um, like uh, animation engines and rendering engines. Um, it, it might be overkill for 3D printing, but I'm comfortable with Maya. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Maya, or if you're interested in learning uh, or wanting to see how Maya, um, how you can create something in Maya and send it to a 3D printer, let's do it. So let's do create a simple little object here. Um, like I said, we're going to be making a fridge magnet pen holder. So the first thing I need to know, using a caliper, uh, by the way, the magnets I'll be using, oops, ah, these things are strong. These are neodymium magnets, okay? I'm gonna be using two of these on these. So anyway, first thing you need is a caliper. If you're ever gonna make things in 3D, use a caliper. So I'm gonna measure this pen here. And it's telling me that the diameter of this pen is about 10 point, 73 millimeters so 1.07 uh, um, all right so that means I want to make it a little bit bigger than that so we're gonna make it we're gonna make it about what 1.5 all right let's do one and a half centimeters uh, okay first off I know that we want one and a half centimeters so I'm gonna put 0 0.75 centimeters and the height is going to be five centimeters. And uh, we're done with that, okay? So next thing we're gonna do is I am going to uh, put some subdivision caps on here. Maybe, yeah, I'll just do one there. There's one at the bottom. Sounds cool. So this is actually the hole that, that the pen is gonna go into. So uh, one thing we can do right off the bat is select our faces by right clicking hitting select and then extruding okay and I'm going to extrude uh, I'm gonna make it about oh, I'm gonna say this thick all right that sounds good to me all right and next I'm gonna select all these faces here by selecting the face, by the way. Now, this is object mode. You right click and you go to either face mode, which will select faces. And if you hit W, translate, you can move these faces around. Um, this isn't really a Maya tutorial, but anyway, I'll, I'll say things as I go. So anyway, I'm gonna select all these faces by selecting one face, selecting second face and double clicking. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same for the inside, but the problem is the inside has three faces, so uh, no, it won't do it. Nope, it just doesn't do it with three faces. I don't know why. Anyway, does it matter? Because I'll just select all of them. And now, um, this is our original pipe, our original, sorry, cylinder that we made, which is the hole. Remember, we're starting with the hole. So I am now going to extrude and I'm gonna click this little thing right here. And what that does, it centers the pivot point all the way. I'm just gonna bring it to the bottom. So it centers the pivot point. So I don't know, I, that's just the way I do it. Uh, now I'm gonna to go to wireframe shading. Oh, sorry. I'm actually gonna select the faces on the bottom here. And I'm gonna deselect by selecting control and dragging, and I'm going to go ahead and extrude these faces down. Notice I didn't click that little thing there that time, just to show you how it worked. Okay, so I got that. Now if I go to this, my shelf here, click on this little thing here, brings it into wireframe mode. Now I'm gonna go into right view. So this line here was our original depth of the hole. So right now I'm gonna select all these vertices which is where edges intersect. Hope you remember grade four math. Anyway, geometry. 
Um, so now I'm going to turn on wire shading again. No, sorry, uh, solid shading. Okay, so we have our original tube that we made, and there's now a hole. Let me turn off uh, the grid here. Okay, so uh, that's where the pen is going to go into. So now I'm going to go ahead and do something called deleting history. And every time you do something to an object in Maya, it, it, it builds up over here. You'll see a bunch of things happen here. That's going to be using RAM, and it's going to be slowing down, or it could potentially slow down um, Maya. So I don't want that. Anyway, uh, now the Z axis here, this is Z, this is X, and this is Y. And what I'm going to do now is I got to put a back facing here so I can put the, the magnets on, right? So the best way I personally think, I could be wrong, is uh, let me go to the top view here. And I'm going to go ahead and select all these things here. And I'm going to take a look at this. And I'm going to say, all right, you, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just counting. There is no numerical, you know, nothing exact. Um, huh. Uh, I think that should be good. And I'm going to select these over here. Okay. All right. And that should be is that half or not? Let me just go to top view here. Uh, yeah, that's half. Okay. I just wanted to make sure it was half the cylinder was being selected. Now what I'm going to do is extrude. Okay. And I'm going to extrude away from Z back like that. There's a reason why I'm doing all this. Right? And you can see where this is going, right? So now what I'm going to do is go back to my top view. I'm going to go ahead and select all these vertices. All of them. And I want to make sure... Well, let me go to... Let's go perspective view, okay? I don't want to make sure... I want to make sure none of these are selected. It's just these. Go back to my top view. And now I'm going to do some magic with scale. Hit R. Again with my Z, I'm going to bring all these together. And they should make a nice flat edge. Now, I don't really need it to be that big. So I'm just going to go to my right view, select all these verts, making sure I have no other verts selected. I'm just going to go ahead and bring these in. I really don't need it to be that thick. Of course, when you go grab the pen, you do want some space. So... I'm just going to bring it back. Ah, let's just do it like that. That looks good to me. So we can stop right now and start putting our, our holes for our magnets. But I want this to be a little bit smoother. Like if I take off this, you can see that these edges are hard. Kind of looks ugly. So just for fun, let's make it smooth. And the best way to do that is to just go to polygons. And there's something called smooth, which you could find, by the way, all these little objects here, you could all find them in the, um, the, to the tool show, uh, the file menu. And I got one here called Mike's. You could also add, make your own custom one, but I'll leave that for some other time. If you're interested in all that, let me know. Anyway, let me turn on my wireframe again. Sorry. There you go. Wire on solid shading. So watch what happens if I smooth this. Bam, look how ugly that is. Okay, now it looks cool here. Let's see how nice and smooth that is. But up here, it looks like crap. So what do we do to make it look even better or to smooth out more efficiently? We use something called split, ed split selected edge ring. So what that does is if I try and select this edge here, I'm giving it more information. Actually, I'm going to put one here and one here. The more information I put, the smoother it becomes. So I'm going to put one around here. And maybe one. No. Do I want to put one there? We don't know yet. So let me just put this here. And that should tighten it up. 
Okay, now you see what's happening here? I'm putting these edge loops and what they do, in fact, let me tighten this one up a little bit more. See that? That'll make it super tight on the back. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and see all this stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and delete history. You can also delete history by editing um, edit. Delete all by type history. Okay, and I might put one more little edge loop. Let's say here. Just one more. Uh, let's let's do that. That's cool. Um, now, do I need one on the inside? I think I do. I think I do. So first I'm gonna put one here at the bottom just to keep the bottom nice and tight. Oops. Right here. And of course I wanna put one right here on the inside. And I'm gonna put a few more down there just to keep it. Again, the more information you have in your model, the smoother the outcome. So now let's delete history and smooth our object. And now it's much nicer. Look at that, much nicer. In fact, if I take off the wireframe, now you can see that it is very, very nice. Okay, Ooh, wait a second. I'm getting some test, oh, I'm getting some, uh, some weirdness down here. Let's see what's going on. Ooh, that's ugly. Okay, so let's now remove smooth face by either hitting undo or putting continuity to, or sorry, divisions to zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete history actually, just take that off. Okay, so what's going on here? Oh, it's stretching a lot. That's what's going on here because there's no hole, right? So what can we do here? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we could do here. Well, I could put a little bit more information here. A little bit more information. No, I think that'll make it worse. What happens if I split? No, can't do that. No, can't do that. Uh, okay, so let's just keep it like that. And let's see what happens when I delete history and then uh, smooth poly. A little bit better, but this is kind of ugly still. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit, one more piece of information here. There we go. Hopefully that'll do it. And um, delete history and poly smooth. Kablamo. All right. A oh, that's better. Yeah, that's, that's fine. So as you can see now, it is good. All right, next challenge is to take these neodymium magnets and place them in there. Now here's the thing. Uh, normally what you should, not should do, but what some people might do is you take off the smooth, smooth mesh and uh, make your holes. Like, like pretty much what we did here. There are other ways to make holes. We're gonna actually use that. Um, some people would actually take this vertex and split it and make it into a perfect circle. Here's the thing. This is um, this is for 3D printing. So the way I do it, because it has to be exact, right? Now the way I do it is, let me delete this. Hold on, and do it all over again. Um, excuse me. I am going to well, that's reduce. No, I want to smooth. All right, I'm, that's the smoothest I want. That's cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit this little cylinder thing here. And I am going to recreate as exact as I can. Maybe even a little bit bigger, smidge bigger. Oh, these magnets are tough. Okay, I'm gonna take this magnet. Using my caliper, we're gonna recreate this magnet. So if I just put it on here, the diameter of this magnet is exactly, uh, according to this, eight millimeters. So that means the radius would be four. Oops. 
0.4 millimeters. And the height of this magnet is, uh, it says 2 point, uh, you know what, let me make sure this is zeroed out. Yeah, it is. So using, here, I'll just show you what I'm doing here. It is 2.95 millimeters. So I'm gonna say three millimeters. No, actually I'm gonna, no, you know what? It says 2.95. So therefore I will put 0.295. And there it is. Now, the radius, I'm gonna make a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna put four, uh, five. No, maybe that's too much. Four, three. I think that should be good. The reason why I'm making it bigger is because this is going to be something that's 3D printed, and you might get like um like a swell type of thing, or there might be some imperfections. I want to, I want this to fit right in there. I am going to put some E6600 glue just for insurance. Um, so you know, we'll we'll see how it works out, but. Uh, let me go ahead and flip this by hitting uh, E and rotating it. Where is it? Where is it? I'm rotating it on the X. So I'm going to do 90 degrees. So it's parallel to that. Now I am going to make this a little bit uh, deeper. Um, let's say 3.1. Okay. Uh, maybe 3.5. 0 0.35 centimeters. The reason is... Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of glue and I need to, you, you need to compensate for that. So now I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this. Okay. Make this guy go up a bit. So let's go to our right view. There it is. And I think the separation is pretty good there and there. All right. And I'm going to put them in. Now I'm going to put this in just until they're sort of, let's see. Can I see them? Yeah, I can. So just like that. So they're sort of popping out. So remember how we made that hole by extruding and doing all that. Another way is by selecting, like I said, a vertice, popping it open and then adding more divisions until you get this really nice hole. And what we're going to be using are booleans. So I'm going to keep it um, smooth at this point because this is the shape I want. So what I'm going to do is select the object that I want to punch a hole into. Then select, oh boy, let me turn on wireframe here. Then select this bad boy, if I can, there it is. And now I'm gonna go to Boolean or Boolean or whatever, you, I don't know how to pronounce it, and select difference. And now we're gonna get a perfect, nice punched hole on this smooth mesh. If I didn't do that, the hole would get smooth. I didn't want that. I just want a nice clean hole. All right. And that's the reason why I did it that way. So again, select your uh, main body mesh. I'm going to go with the inside and select the magnet. And now Boolean difference. Pop. We're done. Okay. So all that's left to do now is I'm going to go ahead and delete history. Make sure it's cool. And I'm going to go ahead and export this. And we're going to send it to our 3D printer. So the way to do that is you have to make sure if you go to Windows, you go to Setting Preferences, you go to Plugin Manager, you should, you have to look for something called STL. It might be loaded by default. Um, STL, D, uh, anyway, I can't remember what it's called. I'll find it right now. So I'm going to select the object because I already have it loaded. Um, Select the object here, and I'm going to say export selection. You don't want to export all because you're going to have include the cameras, lights, or whatever the hell you have. Export selection, and STL underscore DCE is the file type uh, you want to use. That's where you want to go to that plugins folder. And I'm going to say export selection. I'm going to open up Cura. This is 5.0. There is an update, 5.1 right now, but um, I'm not going to bother with that. Okay, so now uh, I guess we are ready to export it as G-code. 
Um, now if I go to layer view and I hit play, it'll show me how it's gonna print. Okay? And this is how it's gonna print. Boom. Now my only issue is see this these gaps see that where it fills the hole um, you know what this might not be the best way I'm gonna rotate it this way I think this will print better and plate adhesion I'm gonna put it on a raft okay uh, raft brim no raft yeah I might print this on a raft let's go to layer view prepare and there we go one hour 22 minutes now ah so there it is so it's gonna make build it on a raft and I think this is probably the best way to print it not face down the way I had it before Okay, so uh, without doing anything else, 25% density. Ah, you know what? We don't need 25%. In fact, 20% should be more than enough. In fact, 15% um, might be great. Doesn't have to be that thick. All right. Let me see. Oh, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Even shaves off a couple of minutes. Okay. So we are ready to go uh, and send this to our uh, printer. So what I'm going to do now is save file and uh, let's go print. Okay. So here it is uh, printing. At, at the nozzle temperature is about 200 degrees bed temperature is at 60 uh, and it's of course printing on a raft and the reason why you did that is because it's a any vertical piece needs some stability at the bottom but anyway let's not talk about 3d uh, it's printed out and here it is here's the back uh, printed in orange PLA and it pretty much came out um, the way we designed it nice and smooth even the corners here the edges because of that smoothing that we did uh, they're not very sharp so that's that's cool and you could tell how sharp these are because we didn't we didn't do any smoothing with the magnet holders so now the moment of truth we took our magnet remember we increased it um, the the uh, diameter just a little bit so now I'm going to take the magnet and I'm going to put it. Oh, and it's very loose. Look at that. Perfect fit. But the problem is it just comes flying out. So what I'm going to do is put in a little bit of, uh, what, what's that glue called? E66000. And uh, hopefully it'll stick in pretty good. Uh, I guess we could have went a little bit smaller. We didn't have to put in that big of a gap because we could probably have just snapped that in there but it's just coming out now both holes oh wait a second second hole might be nope second holes loosey-goosey too so anyway put in a little bit of glue and stick it on the fridge and uh, yeah there it is little pen holder via Maya and that took an hour to print and I don't know how long to design you can look at the time code and uh, that's about it. So thanks a lot for watching. And uh, maybe if you would like, I'll do some more Maya tutorials with uh, 3D printing. There is something I actually do want to do. Just before we go, I would like to... Um, I'm into microscopy. And I printed out this thing earlier today. And over overnight, actually. It took seven hours to print. And this is a metal rod. Um... I could have used the wooden rod or I could have printed the rod. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's a metal rod and what this is for is for microscopy. So you take a, a slide and you put it in here and you put in some nail polish with your specimen and put on a cover glass and this 
uh, and you put some weight on top of here. I don't really need it because I'm using the metal rod, but you put some weight on top of here, like pennies or nuts and bolts, and it will um, create a nice thin layer of nail polish um, and create the thinnest possible cross section of, of the specimen in your glass. Um, so without air bubbles and you just let let it sit there for about two hours and it should give you the best possible result so anyway that's one thing i printed and also i have this box here so maybe in the next video what we could do again with maya so i got this box this is my microscope box i pr i 3d printed these things here this is a, a pip holder and I, and I just glued this to this uh, really nice kind of box and I got my um, tweezer holders here and they're all snapped in by magnets. They're all being held in by magnets at the back. So now what I have to do is at the bottom, see how everything's disorganized? So what I wanna do is make compartments for stuff like the glass. Uh, this is like a, a little glass container that I put liquid in, like pond water or whatever. I got some uh, drop, what are, what are these eye droppers for things like uh, food coloring dyes and stuff nail polish some scissors polarizer this is a microscope part uh, cover slides anyway things like that so maybe in the next video we'll make a, a bigger um, base a bigger print or something like this so anyway um, I know this isn't really artistic but um it's 3d printing and it's using maya so if you're interested subscribe and i'll see you in the next video my time's up ciao